This is five on your side at four, focused on you. As we go on the air at four, we have the latest on the bridge collapse in Baltimore. We have the last moments the Francis Scott Key Bridge stood before it was struck before a 1,000 foot ship and crumbled in the early morning hours. Now the search is underway for a number of motorists who went missing after it fell. Thank you for being here at four. I'm Kay Quinn. Brent Solomon has the day off. The collapse happened around 1.30 this morning. Search and rescue teams are saying as many as six people, possibly more, are still missing. Authorities say commuters and maintenance crews were on the bridge as it collapsed. NBC's Jay Gray has the latest. An intense rescue and recovery effort continues in the bitter cold waters of the Patapsco River right now. Teams searching for survivors after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge overnight. The bridge is gone. Holy Here's what we know at this point. The crew on board this massive container ship apparently lost control of the vessel minutes after leaving the port of Baltimore, issuing a mayday call warning they'd lost power and propulsion. Security video shows lights blinking and smoke climbing from the ship just before crashing into a center support column on the bridge. The iconic structure crumbling. As units were responding, they began to receive numerous calls indicating multiple people in the water. A crew doing routine maintenance filling potholes and several vehicles were on the bridge as it collapsed. Two of the workers quickly pulled to safety, but authorities acknowledge several people are still missing. Our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. President Biden promising the full support and resources of the federal government in the wake of the tragedy. Jay Gray, NBC News, Baltimore. The collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore has many people asking how safe our local bridges are and what's being done to prevent a similar incident in the St. Louis area. Five on Your Side's Holden Kerwicki spent the day speaking with engineers on both sides of the river. He joins us now live along the Mississippi with more. Hold. Well, Okay, MoDOT manages roughly 10,000 bridges all across the state of Missouri. And though incidents like this are rare, they do happen and have happened right here in St. Louis, just not to the scale of what happened in Baltimore Harbor. In April of 1998, the Ann Holly tow was traveling through St. Louis when it rammed into the center span of the Eads Bridge, causing eight barges to break away, three of which hit the old Admiral Casino, which was moored along the riverfront, causing minor injuries to 50 people. And then in June of 2014, both the MLK and Eads Bridge were temporarily closed after being struck by another barge. MoDOT engineer Eric Schroeder says these situations are taken into consideration during construction. We do design for, for that potential of impact. Now, luckily, if you look over time, we haven't had that many. Uh, the first thing that occurs when we do have a strike is we close the structure down so that we can inspect it and ensure it's safe before we reopen it. Uh, on some occasions, we, we were able to work with the Coast Guard when they notify that something is loose on the river. Uh, we'd like to be more proactive, but timing doesn't always work that way. Though barges and tugs may be the most common thing that we see out on the Mississippi, that's actually not what MoDOT is most concerned about. I'll have more on that coming up at 5 o'clock. Reporting live along the riverfront, Holden Kerwicki, 5 on your side. All right, thank you, Holden. Let's take a look downtown where it's windy and cold, coat weather for sure. Actually, this is Kirkwood, and you're going to need that coat in the next day or so. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell here with a look at our weather first forecast. Uh, you see downtown there uh, a look at some of those clouds, Kay, and that breeze that's been a little bit gusty around the St. Louis area at this point. Again, we're continuing to watch this colder air filter in after some badly needed rainfall that we saw last night and uh, during the day yesterday for areas west of St. Louis. Last night was our time in St. Louis to pick up that moisture. We ended up with about an inch for most of the metro area or a little more. Right now the clouds are still lingering as you look out into St. Charles County at this point and we are talking about temperatures that are only in the 40s. There's again the Kirkwood Farmers Market, which brings us to the fact that yes, the growing season has sort of started. Mother Nature's had the warmer weather with us and because of that we have had to deal with things blooming a little sooner than they otherwise would have. And that means with colder temperatures expected overnight, especially going down 
below freezing in some spots that could create some issues. Right now, most of us around the metro area are in the lower 40s. As we look north and west of St. Louis, it's in the 30s. We're anticipating overnight the temperatures will drop back into the 20s west and north of St. Louis. That does include parts of the eastern Ozarks, so a hard freeze is likely at a freeze warning is in effect from Bowling Green through Troy to Warrington to Washington, Missouri, down to Potosi and all the way down towards Rolla. Clouds, they're going to be slower to break up, which is a good thing because the lack of the clouds breaking up tonight will keep us at least a few degrees warmer. And Kate, we're not really too worried about the potential of frost given the breeze overnight. All right, that is good news. Thank you, Scott. We'll see you in a few minutes. Hours ago, the trial of a man accused of killing a St. Charles County woman got underway. Prosecutors told jurors Joseph DeJoie gave Jackie Mitchell drugs, including fentanyl, in March of 2023, causing a fatal overdose. They also allege he stuffed her body into a plastic bin in his bedroom in Maryland Heights. DeJoie's defense attorneys told jurors Jackie fell into the bin and their client freaked out when he woke up the next morning and found her still in it, not moving. Five on Your Side's Christine Byers was in the courtroom today. Look for her reports on Five on Your Side at 5 and 6. Right now, a man is behind bars in Jefferson County, charged with a crime spree last Friday. Stephen Deering is accused of beating a woman at a Maplewood boxing gym before assaulting an elderly woman in Barnhart and stealing her car. Investigators say he then broke into a home in Barnhart and threatened three children. Corporal Chris Guerin with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department arrived at the home, kicked down the door and caught Deering. While Guerin ended up taking Deering into custody, he credits the kid's grandmother with being the real hero of the day. She grabbed her kids, she ran, um, locked the doors behind her as she went in them. Um, she hid in a bedroom and barricaded. And then, you know, from, from talks with her, she was prepared to fight if it, if it got to that point. Um, you know, everybody is saying how good of a job I've done throughout this whole thing. But really, I think most of the credit should go to her. Deering is facing charges including endangering a child, assault, burglary, and more. He's being held at the Jefferson County Jail on a $150,000 bond. Hours from now, parents in the Parkway School District will learn more about plans for a new early childhood center. Some are not on board with the new project in the southern part of the district. Five on Your Side's Mercedes McKay reports from Manchester. District leaders say a new early childhood center is necessary to accommodate the increasing demand from families. Parents and concerned residents I spoke to say they're all for another early childhood center, but just not in this location. The $32 million facility will have room for more than 300 kids with 13 classrooms, plus inclusive indoor and outdoor learning spaces, and it's set to open in the fall of 2026. The district wants to build it between Wren Hollow Elementary and Southwest Middle School, but some parents and residents have put up signs around the area saying they don't want it there. The main worry is increased traffic in an already congested area. School leaders say the district is doing a traffic impact study, and those results will help them decide side on start and end times for programs. The traffic now is horrendous. This would add 400 more cars a day to a one way in, one way out cul-de-sac. We don't want poor traffic for the neighborhood or for our kids and families or for any of us. And so we're going to be working together to look at how do we make this um, a win-win for the neighborhood as well as for our schools and students. District leaders hope to answer all of the concerned residents and parents questions tonight at the meeting. It'll be at 6 p.m. at Southwest Middle School in Manchester. Mercedes McKay, five on your side.